Hi, uh, this is Will Martin from PicoOilProof.com. Uh, today I wanted to look at the full life cycle cost analysis uh, between electric cars and gasoline powered cars. Uh, in a previous video I had looked at just the cost of filling up an electric car with uh, rooftop solar power versus uh, filling up a gasoline powered car with regular gasoline. Um, and in that analysis, uh, essentially I found that right now it is cheaper uh, to fill your electric car with rooftop solar powered electrons than it is to fill a gasoline powered car uh, with gasoline. Um, but some people on Twitter, you know, said, hey, how does this work with the full life cycle cost, you know, including the, the fact that a, an electric car costs quite a bit more than a gasoline powered car, uh, you know, the equivalent gasoline powered car. Um, so today I wanted to sort of look at the full life cycle analysis and compare uh, electric cars versus gasoline powered cars on, a, on including all of the costs associated with them. So uh, again, this is just the conceptual framework. It's a substitution curve. It essentially says that renewable energy prices stay level or get cheaper over time, uh, which is the blue line, and fossil fuel energy prices go up over time as uh, fossil fuels become more and more expensive as uh, we start getting into the harder to extract uh, fossil fuels. So eventually those two reach a parity point uh, and that is when substitution starts occurring and people start switching over from fossil fuels to renewable energy. Um, and if we're talking about peak oil, that's essentially peak oil demand that uh, essentially at some point demand will start to decline as the cost of using renewables is becomes cheaper than, than using fossil fuels. Uh, one of the important things I didn't mention in the previous video is the overall environmental impact of driving an electric car versus uh, driving a gasoline powered car. And it really matters where you're getting your electrons from when you're driving an electric car uh, as far as how what, how big your environmental impact is relative to a gasoline powered car. Uh, this is a recent analysis uh, that was put out and it compares the various ways of, of fueling a car versus a traditional gasoline powered car, uh, both from an air quality standpoint and from a climate change standpoint. And what we see is if you have uh, uh, an electric car that you power primarily with coal fired electricity, uh, it's far, far worse than, than a gasoline-powered car, both from an air quality standpoint and a climate change standpoint. Um, but if you, if you fill up your car with either wind power, uh, hydroelectric power, or solar power, uh, which is the WWS at the bottom, wind, water, and solar, uh, it is far better both from an air quality standpoint and a climate change standpoint. Uh, so for my analysis, I'm essentially saying that you would buy solar panels, put them on the roof of your house, charge your electric car with that, and then comparing it to what the equivalent uh, gasoline-powered car would be. So from a pure environmental standpoint, uh, charging your electric car from uh, the solar panels on your roof uh, is far better than, and, you know, from, from an air quality standpoint and a climate change standpoint than driving an electric car. That being said, so here is the... Forecast for residential solar or levelized cost of electricity. This is uh, from a few different analyses. And what we see is that solar panel costs have come down significantly over the last decade. And that forecasts are going forward uh, show that they will continue likely to get uh, cheaper over time. Uh, the dotted line is the assumption I'm using in the model. Meanwhile, gasoline prices have gotten uh, considerably more expensive over the last couple of decades. Uh, for the model, I'm basically assuming that gasoline prices will continue uh, to get more expensive over time on uh, the historic five-year compounded annual growth rate. And so what we see is just from the fueling your car standpoint, uh, in 2012 it actually became cheaper to charge an electric car using rooftop solar than it would be uh, to fill a gasoline powered car with gasoline uh, if you're comparing them on a, a per mile basis or on a equivalent per gallon basis. Now what's really important for electric cars is that the battery costs have come down significantly over the last decade and this is a forecast from the U.S. Energy Department showing that the battery costs are expected to continue decreasing in costs over time uh, this will mean that electric cars 
buying a new electric car will get cheaper and cheaper over time as uh, the battery costs come down, or uh, electric cars will stay about the same price, but their range will dramatically increase over time. For the model, I'm assuming that the range will stay the same and that the actual cost of the car will come down over time. So the car that I'm comparing uh, the Nissan Leaf to is the Nissan Versa Note. And if you look at the specs of the two cars, they're essentially the same as, as far as you know what, what you get uh, between the two cars. Um, so it's, it's the best proxy I could find. Uh, I took uh, a few different uh, total cost of ownership estimates from the internet and average them out. And, and this is essentially what I'm using for the model assumptions. Um, when you take the total cost of ownership, you have to look at things like how much does it cost to insure the car, the maintenance and repairs on the car, the taxes, uh, and then the depreciation financing opportunity costs, which come from uh, not only the overall price of the car, but um, how quickly it depreciates. And obviously electric cars depreciate quite a bit faster than gasoline powered cars uh, because the battery degrades over time. Uh, so your, your uh, resale value on electric car is far worse than a gasoline powered car. So that's all built into this model. Uh, what we see with the Nissan Versa is that uh, the discounted five year total cost of ownership will be increasing over time as the fuel price increases over time with all the other costs essentially staying the same. Now, when you look at the Nissan LEAF, uh, what we see is that the fuel cost actually comes down a little bit over time. It's already a very small part of the total cost of owning an electric car. Um, the fuel cost in this case is, is just rooftop solar. Uh, the other big thing that comes down over time, though, is the depreciation financing and opportunity costs. And this is because the, the sale price of the car will come down over time. So uh, Nissan LEAF for equivalent electric car purchased in 2025 uh, should be significantly cheaper than the same car purchased in 2015. And so this is the total cost of ownership discounted five year uh, line going forward. Now when we compare the two, what we see is that in 2016, uh, it becomes cheaper uh, to buy a subsidized electric car on a total cost of ownership basis than it would be to buy an equivalent gasoline powered car. Then in 2020, it becomes cheaper to buy an unsubsidized electric car uh, relative to purchasing the equivalent gasoline powered car. Um, so we see the, the blue line is, is regular, is the gasoline powered car getting more and more expensive over time. The uh, green line is the unsubsidized electric car, the yellow line is the subsidized electric car, and both are getting cheaper and cheaper over time. So obviously this is a pretty complicated model. Um, I am gonna put this up on GitHub. I'm gonna link to it on the YouTube video uh, and my website, picooilproof.com. Uh, follow me on Twitter, I'm at peakoilproof, and I hope you'll enjoy the model. Thank you.